Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. Are you guys happy to be in the house of the Lord this Sabbath? Yes. Amen. It's a little cooler today, amen? <laughs> uh, since I've moved to Florida, this is the first day I actually wore a jacket outside. Um, and so that was, that was kind of cool. And I'm still wearing a jacket when it's above 70, and I thought that was kind of odd. But, you know, I'm so glad that the weather is starting to cool down. But thank you so much for deciding to worship with us here at the Fort Myers Seventh-day Adventist Church. If this is your first time worshiping with us here at this church, I want to let you know personally that this can be your church home. This is a place you could come to, to, to grow with people, to connect with people, to serve with people, and to really call this place your home in which you could grow with God. And so I want to let you know that this is a place you can stay for a long time. And so if you have your bulletin, uh, we have a connect card attached to it where you can put your information so that we can connect with you and we can show you more events that is happening in this church and get you involved with our church family. Um, at this moment, I want to invite my friend Brad to give us a couple of special announcements regarding um, some Pathfinder-affiliated stuff. So, Brad, go ahead. Good morning. Can everybody grab your bulletin? Inside your bulletin, you'll see a form that looks like this. All right? The Pathfinders are looking to do some uh, community outreach. And being as I don't know everybody in the community, I need help finding people that need help. So if you could fill this out, if you know somebody who could use the Pathfinders helping hand, doing yard work, painting, cleaning the house, um, my wife keeps trying to talk me to get him to come down to our house, but I say, no, that's not who we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for somebody that's, you know, for either for medical reasons or because of age, they just can't do the things around their house that they need to do. We want to come and help them. And I don't know everybody in this community, but you guys know a lot of them. And if you could fill that out, put it in the offering plate. It doesn't have, if you can't think of anybody today, take it home with you, think about it, turn it in next week. Can you get the slide? The other thing is we're having a garage sale tomorrow. Um, you may have seen the signs as you were driving in that there was a garage sale going on. If you would like to sell your stuff, you can come and rent a table um, for 20 bucks. Or if you just want to come and see if you want to buy other people's stuff, it's from 9 to 2 tomorrow. Um, and if you know somebody who likes garage sales and isn't aware about it, tell them about it. We need uh, as many people coming as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brad, for your leadership and everything that you do for our church. Uh, can we move to the next slide about our annual Thanksgiving Club Chip Potluck? Uh, everyone is invited to this potluck on November 14 on Thursday at 6.15 p.m. And so if you would like to come, please bring a whole food plant base. I saw the word or the, the acronym WFPB, and I had no idea what that stood for, but now I know <laughs> that... WFPB stands for Whole Food Plant-Based Meals and Recipes. So make sure to create, make enough food for eight people. And if you'd like to include the recipe with your meal so that other people are able to know how to cook whole food plant-based meals. Again, that's on November 14, Thursday at 6.15 p.m. Um, our next announcement is that next Sabbath on November 16, we will have our Festival of Praise. Uh, Miss Brenda has these Publix paper bags with lists of ingredients and foods on them so that we're able to collect 100 bags to feed 100 families in need. And so if you'd like to give back to your community here at this church, we are very intentional about reaching those in need in the city of Fort Myers. And so if you have not yet, please grab a donation bag so that we could start serving our community here in this church. Um, Next week, we also have a parenting seminar by John Roseman that will be happening on the morning of the 16th, happening the afternoon of the 16th, and also will be happening sometime in the morning on the 17th. And so if you're a parent in here that is wanting to learn more about the power of parenthood and discipling your children, please come. And yes, we will have children's care available. And so if you're thinking, ah, oh, like, I don't know where I'm going to drop off my kid. I don't have somebody to babysit. We at this church will provide a children's service so that we can take care of your kids as you're attending this class. Um, we also will have a potluck next week. We'll be having a potluck hot dog feast. I personally like Big Frank hot dogs. And so if you like them as well, we'll be having that feast next Saturday in the fellowship hall right after church. I would like to invite everybody to stand at this moment as we read the word of God. Because at this church, we believe that God's word is the po most powerful thing in our lives.
Our scripture reading is found in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, and it says, Samuel told the Israelites, I have given you a king just as you asked. For you have seen how I have led you ever since I was the young man. I'm already old. My hair is gray, and my own sons are grown. Now you must see how well your king will lead you. Let me ask this. Have I ever taken anyone's ox or donkey or forced you to give me anything? Have I ever hurt anyone or taken a bribe to give an unfair decision? Answer me so the Lord and his chosen king can hear you. And if I have done any of these things, I will give it all back. No, the Israelites answered. You've never cheated us in any way. Samuel said, the Lord and his chosen king are witnesses to what you have said. That's true, they replied. Then Samuel told them, the Lord brought your ancestors out of Egypt and chose Moses and Aaron to be your leaders. Now the Lord will be your judge. So stand here and listen while I remind you how often the Lord has saved you and your ancestors from your enemies. After Jacob went to Egypt, your ancestors cried out to the Lord for help. And he sent Moses and Aaron. They led your ancestor out of Egypt and had them settle in this land. But your ancestors forgot the Lord, so he let them be defeated by the Philistines, the king of Moab, and Caesarea, the commander of Hazar's army. Again, your ancestors cried out to the Lord for help. They said, we have sinned. We stopped worshiping you, O Lord, you, our Lord, and started worshiping Baal and Ar 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 Tar Astarte. But now, if you rescue us from our enemies, we will worship you. The Lord sent Gideon, Bedan, Japheth, and Samuel to rescue you from your enemies, and you didn't have to worry about being attacked. Then you saw that King Nahash of Ammon was going to attack you. And even though the Lord your God is your king, and you told me, the time it's diff the, this time it's different, we want a king to rule us. You asked for a king, and you chose one. Now he stands here where all of you can see him, but it was really the Lord who made him your king. If you and your king want to be followers of the Lord, you must worship him and do what he says. Don't be stubborn. Let us all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much that the Sabbath is a gift to all of us, Father. This is a gift we didn't earn. This is a gift that we don't deserve. But Father, this is a gift that we accept this morning. Um, and Lord, we accept by faith that we are saved by your grace. Father, I pray that as we enter into this worship hour, that your spirit may come into our hearts and change us and make us new people. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. At this moment, I'd like for all of us to turn to our neighbor and to greet at least six people and to tell them I am so glad that you are here. Way back to your seats. Remain standing and let's uh, let's sing.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Veterans Day. As we give special honor to our military veterans, those who have put their lives on the line to ensure our freedom, whether in the time of war or the time of peace, our military are there for us, protecting our shores and skies. As we ponder that, let us also remember that each one of, here, one of us here is engaged in a fierce battle, a battle called the Great Controversy, or the struggle between good and evil. We already know from the Bible who will win the, that this, this battle, but until such a time, we are living in an in-battle world. We have many soldiers among us as well. They are our global mission pioneers, pushing back the frontiers of the spiritual wor world. Global mission is the frontline arm of the Adventist mission and office of the Seventh-day Adventist Church World Headquarters. The organization sends volunteers, missionaries, typically one to two years to reach people in areas of the world where there are no Seventh-day Adventist members. Together, global mission pioneers and cross-cultural Seventh-day Adventist missionaries are working to tell the world about the love of Christ and in some of the world's hardest to reach places. Let us give them our support today and above all, let us uphold them in prayer. May the deacons please stand for prayer. Lord, please continue to protect and guide all those who are serving you and spreading the world word of your love. Please be with us. Let us be grateful and cheerful as we give to your mission work. Amen. Okay, 
<laughs> At this moment, I'd like to invite all of our children up for the children's story. And so children, please come up as you hear a wonderful children's story by Kelsey Higgins. morning guys how we doing how'd you guys like the weather this morning <laughs> kind of yucky huh so even though with all that rain and the clouds was the sun out today even though you can't see it right it's still there well my son my story this morning is is about the weather it's a um, a make-believe story so you have to turn your imaginations on for me okay so one day, the sun is shining in the sky, right? It's a beautiful day. It's shining upon a lovely little park. The children are playing, and the flowers are blooming. The sun isn't alone in the sky, though. The wind is also in the sky with the sun. Now, the sun is happy. The sun's always happy, right? In my story, we're going to make believe that the sun is smiling and happy and loving. The wind comes along. The wind is not like the sun so much. He's a little bit more on the grumpy side. Now, he loves to talk about himself, and he loves to show off, and he's kind of not very nice, you know. He'll pick on people sometimes. He likes to blow people's hats off and maybe blow picnics away, and he's not nice like the sun. So the wind comes up, and he's bored, and he wants something to do. And he says to the sun, Hey, you see that man there walking in the park? How much you want to bet I can blow his jacket off? And the son says, well, first of all, you know, not only is that not a very nice thing to do, but you can't do that. That's not possible. And if there's one thing the wind doesn't like is when the son tells the wind he can't do something. So he gets pretty upset. He says, oh, yeah? Well, watch me. So the wind starts blowing, blowing directly at this poor man walking in the park. And it's blowing, blowing, and he's got this long trench coat on. And he's walking, and as the wind gets stronger, he starts to hold on to his coat tighter. And the wind is determined, and he thinks he can do anything, right? So he's going to force this man's jacket off of him, and he blows harder and harder. And um, at this point now, the man can hardly walk. And he's barely going through the park like this. And the wind is so strong. So he starts buttoning up his jacket and zipping up his jacket and holding on to it real tight. And eventually, the wind gives up. He says, you know what? I can't get this man's jacket off. The sun was right. So he gives up, and he stops blowing at this poor man. And the sun says, you see, you can't make him take his jacket off. The more you try, the harder he's going to hold on to it. And so... With the wind now stopped, the sun is shining. It's, it's sunlight onto the park like it was always. And the weather starts to warm up. The man is still walking through the park. And it starts to get warmer. And he takes off his jacket all on his own. He takes it off. He folds it over his arm. And the wind says, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. You got the man to take his jacket off willingly. You didn't even have to try. And so, in this story, who do you think God is more like 
Do you think God is more like the sun, or do you think he's more like the wind? The sun, right? God is happy, and he's loving, and he's always there for us. And do we ever go to bed at night doubting that the sun will come up the next day? No. We know the sun will come up every day. We don't ever think, oh, my goodness, what if the sun doesn't come up? If it didn't come up, that would be bad, right? It would be dark all the time. But we know the sun will come up every morning, and so we don't even think about it. And that's how God is. He's always there. He's always shining, and he's always loving us. Even though sometimes things might get in the way, like the clouds and the rain this morning, the sun is still there, right? And even at night when the sun goes away and it's dark, does that mean that the sun decided to go to bed and shut off? No, the sun's on the other side of the, the earth, shining, and we're just seeing the sun's shadow. So God is like the sun. And um, not only is he like the sun, but he wants us all to be like the sun as well. So he wants us to shine bright so that we can, we can shine love and kindness into other people's lives. All right? Does anybody want to pray? Okay, I'm going to be a little biased this morning. Okay. Okay. You want to let Ellie pray? Okay. You want you have to pray or Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all these beautiful children. Thank you for the sun that comes up every day. And we know that thank you for loving us. Help us to have a great day and help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Are we a blessed church or what? We're blessed in so many ways. One of them is, is that God sent us some good pastors. Can you say amen? And many of you have been giving regularly into the Pastor Appreciation Fund, and I'm going to pa call uh, Pastor Blake and Pastor Ridge up on the platform with me for just a moment of appreciation. Ridge? We'll get you one. <laughs> oh, you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, um, Pastor Blake and Ridge, we have uh, a great appreciation for you guys around here. We prayed a long time and went for a long time waiting for God to answer the prayer to send us the perfect pastor for this place and people. And I believe with all my heart that God answered that. Can you say amen? <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so amazed that you have allowed us to be sheep in your flock. We're even more amazed that you find quality men like this to shepherd and feed your flock. We pray your special blessings on Blake and Ridge and their households, and we uh, ask for your special and uh, protective hand and hedge of protection around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Phil. You know, as some of you know, I, you know, I've preached this uh, here in this church before that, um, biblically speaking, the term pastor 
is also synonymous with elder in the scriptures, also synonymous with overseer. So you may remember that. We've done, I think back in April of this year, I did a, a series on that. We talked about, you know, the biblical role of kind of leadership in the church. And so we employ that approach here in this church. And so I also want to say thank you to this man right here, our head elder, Phil Manus, because this guy is truly a shepherd and truly a pastor in this church. And all of our elders that serve in this church, um, it's a great group of elders, and all of them are active and engaged in ministry. And I just, it, it, this is a pleasure to, uh, to pastor in a church like this with leaders like we have here. And then, of course, you know, I was praying because God has blessed our church. There's been, you know, growth in, in our church and, and spiritual growth, and that's also shown in other ways, you know, tithe growth, numerical growth, and so on. And so I was praying for God to send some help down here because we can really go further than we have before. And God was uh, gracious enough to send us this, this gentleman here, Ridge. And, uh, you know, and, and we have Steve here, Steve Jinks, who's a ministerial director for the Central Region of Florida. He'll be uh, speaking today, and I'll introduce him later, not now. But uh, I'm grateful to the conference for, for, uh, for sending Ridge here. And I'm not just up here, you know, there, in a world of formalities where everybody's a great, everything's wonderful, and you're always supposed to say the right thing. I'm not blowing smoke at all here. I really mean this. Um, this guy's a blessing to me personally and a blessing in this church. And this man is a huge blessing as well. And our elders are a blessing. And so it's a team effort here. And I'm just so grateful to be able to work with this team. So thank you, Phil. God bless you. Yeah. Oh, let's let Ridge. Go ahead, Ridge. I'm going to say a little something. Oh, man, I can't top that. <laughs> Um, from, the, from the bottom of my heart, my wife and I are just so thankful for this church. Um, and, and we want to let you guys know that, that because Jesus loves my wife and I and because Jesus loves you all, we're going to work so hard and do our very best so that we can see Jesus come in the soon future. There's another man in this congregation who blesses us greatly and that's Jonathan. So Jonathan come here. We got a we got a special gift for you too. So let's let's sing praises to the Lord. out they're the ones you've been looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Cause ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing living for the world to see nobody Moses had stage fright, and David brought a rock to a soul fight. As you picked 12 outsiders, nobody would have chosen and it changed the world. But the moral of the story is, everybody's got a purpose. So when I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody. Well, all about somebody who saved my soul. Cause ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. So 
Let me go down, down, down in history As another blood-bought, faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me I live for the world to see nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in as another blood-bought, faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me I live for the world to see nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody I'm trying to tell everybody All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. Live for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus.
Lord, I worship your holy name. It's time to go to the Lord in prayer. I think Sandra's leading us in prayer today. But if you have a prayer request, please, please bring it up forward. Give it to Sandra and so she can pray on those matters during the week. Come, if you just want to come down and sing with us, you're welcome. Come down and we're going to sing still. Hide me now, Lord. Yes, Lord, we will be still and know you are God. As I look here at our congregation, I think of Nehemiah's day when they were all gathered together to hear the word. And the people came to God. They, want, they were hungry for his word. And they, they repented and they sought the Lord afresh. And Lord, I think that's what's happening here today. Lord, I just want to thank you for your spirit, for the pastors that you have sent to us, the leadership who is rising to the occasion, each member of the congregation, Lord. I just thank you for each individual here, for the way you work in each individual life. Lord, I don't take it lightly. Sometimes I think you just don't have time for the other people. So, Lord, we just bow our heads before you. We thank you. We praise you for Jesus and the work you're doing in each and every one of our hearts and minds. Continue to subdue us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may become lesser and you become more in everything we think, say, and do. Be with uh, Pastor uh, Jenkins as he uh, lifts us up in a sermon today. May the words he speaks identify with each individual in the way they need it to. Amen. And Lord, I, words are not suffice to thank you for all that you have done for us. Continue and remind us that I, I see the sick among us, 
Lord, people that are, are suffering, uh, the prayer cards, I'm sure, are talking about people that are physically ill, spiritually ill. Lord, intercede in these situations. Help people to get to the other side of the problems and teach us to rely on you like never before in the process. And we just will give you all the glory and the praise and the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you.